what is tuberculosis or some people call it as TB. Yeah. Tuberculosis is an infection which can be caused by a bacteria called mycobacterial tuberculosis. This bacteria usually will infect our lungs, but then it can also infect other organs. For example, it can infect the skin, yeah? it can infect the, the digestive tract, it can infect the liver, it can also infect the brain, it can infect your bone, your spine, your heart. But the main area of infection is actually the lungs. So if it infects the lungs, it is called pulmonary tuberculosis. Means that infection of TB in the lungs. If it is infecting our brain, we call it TB meningitis. Means that infection of the brain meninges due to TB. Depends on the site of infection. If let's say you are having pulmonary TB or lung TB, usually the symptoms are chronic cough. Means that you have prolonged cough of more than two weeks. And you can also have bloody flat during your cough. Sometimes you can have some chest discomfort, some difficulty breathing, and you will definitely have significant weight loss. For example, maybe before this, your weight is about 70 kilo, but after TB, it can drop drastically to about 80 to 40 kilo within a few months. If let's say the TB is infecting your skin, you can have normal skin, a nodule. If you have the infection of the brain, you can have headache, you can have coma, you can have fits, you can have neck pain. If your TB is affecting your bone, you can have abnormality of your bone posture. And if let's say you have TB of the gut, the digestive tract, you can have symptoms like diarrhea, constipation, and it depends on where the cell of TB infection is. Pulmonary TB is an airborne infection like COVID, where it can spread via air. So whenever someone with TB cough or talk or sneeze, they can transmit the bacteria to other people. So that is why it is very important to isolate or quarantine patients who have TB because for the first two weeks of treatment, they are still infectious. So that's why it is very important for patients with TB to wear masks at all time, especially if they have to go out. People who are living with TB patients are also advised to wear masks if they have to be around the TB patient. People who have low immune system, for example, cancer patient, poorly controlled diabetic patient, intravenous drug use or drug abusers, alcoholics patient, patients who are on prolonged steroid treatment, patients who have connective tissue disease, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, who are on multiple case agents, who are on multiple immunosuppressive drugs, or transplant patient who are on immunosuppressive therapy. So people who are having low immunity due to the disease itself or due to the treatment itself are actually very high risk to develop TB. Apart from that, people who are coming from high endemic area of TB means that patient who comes from a country with high rate of disease are also at risk of developing TB infection. TB patients who don't want to take treatment, they will remain infectious to other people they are actually harmful to the society because they can spread the bacteria to other people without them realizing and without other people knowing it as well. Number two, the TB patients itself, the condition, the lung infection or whatever infection that you're having can become worse. Yeah. Let's say they have lung TB and they don't want to be treated. The lung TB can spread to the brain, causing brain TB. It can spread to the heart, causing heart TB can spread to the guts, causing gut TB. It can spread to the skin and subsequently, they can die if they are not treated properly. So untreated TB infection definitely can lead to death. So TB patients will remain infectious until they receive treatment, at least two weeks of treatment. That's why it is important to quarantine a TB patients at least for the first two weeks of treatment. After completing two weeks of treatment, they are no longer infectious to other people and research have shown that the level of bacteria is actually very low after two weeks of treatment. So that's why after two weeks of quarantine, they are safe to mix around with other people. They are safe to go to work. They are safe to go to school. So it is very important to preserve two weeks period for quarantine for TB patients. Because for the first two weeks of treatment, they can still transmit the bacteria. After two weeks of quarantine, they are no longer infectious to other people.
Diagnosis depends on the patient symptoms and also positive chest X-ray and also presence of TB bacteria in their phlegm. So when they have symptoms like prolonged cough, bloody phlegm, significant weight loss, appetite loss, and when we do a chest X-ray, there is significant white patch on the X-ray. Usually TB, they like to af affect the upper part of the lungs, whether the right upper zones or the left upper zones of the chest X-ray. And when we ask them to send for sputum tests, yeah, we ask them to check the phlegm, their sputum will show a presence of TB. Yeah. So clinical symptoms, positive chest X-ray findings, and positive for sputum tests, those are the diagnostic criteria to diagnose lung TB. So basically, if you are infected with TB bacteria, number one, you need to take your treatment. You need to complete your six months regime of therapy in order to ensure full recovery. TB is a curable disease. It can be treated. So please comply to the treatment. I've seen few patients who decided they don't want to complete the six months of therapy. In the end, they get a resistant TB, a stronger TB, yeah, because the TB can come back. So make sure you complete your TB treatment as per schedule. Number two, please complete your two weeks quarantine at home so that you will not expose other people to these dangerous bacteria. And number three, make sure you screen your family members, you screen your household members, your spouse, your children, your relatives who are living with you under the same roof for the past three months. So three things you need to do, complete your treatment for six months, quarantine yourself for at least two weeks, and do home screening for your family members. TB is a very strong bacteria, so it needs at least six months of treatment to complete the therapy for TB patient. We are giving them anti-TB drugs. Yeah. So for the first two months, they'll be given four types of anti-TB drugs, which include resampicin, azonizide, etambutol, and pyrazidomide. These are the four important TB drugs that will be given for the first two months of treatment. We call it intensive phase because we are giving full dose of anti-TB regime. After two months of intensive phase, they will be shifted to four months of maintenance phase. Maintenance phase means that they are only given two types of anti-TB drugs, which are isoniazide and rifampicin for the next four months. Plus, they need to take a vitamin, vitamin uh, pyridoxine. So those are the treatments for TB. Yeah, two months of intensive phase of four types of anti-TB drugs, followed by four months of two types of anti-TB drugs. Unfortunately, no. TB patients, even though they have recovered from the TB illness, even though they have completed their six months of anti-TB treatment, they can still be infected in the future. Unfortunately, we do not have any TB vaccine as per yet. So that's why we need to maintain the surveillance. Usually after someone recover from TB, they still need to come back to see their doctor for monitoring. Usually we monitor after uh, three months of recovery, and then after six months, and then after nine months, and then after one year, and if they are okay, they can be discharged. So please be careful. Yeah, Even though you have recovered from your TB infection, there is no guarantee that you will not be infected again. There is still a risk of getting TB reinfection after you recover from TB.